Hey everyone, it's Holly. In today's video, by special request, I'm gonna be showing you how I catalog all of my poly sets, how I store them, and what that whole process looks like. So let's get started. Okay, so welcome to my station. Now, <laughs> this isn't where I normally film my videos, um, so it's not set up as ideally as we normally would have it. Uh, the lighting is a little dark, I apologize for that, but we're just doing the best we can for the area of the house that I do this work in. Um, so I'm at my computer. I've got a few sets here that we're gonna walk through and I'm going to show you cataloging an incomplete set, a complete set, and then how I catalog my little tiny spares that come in that do not currently have a home, what I do with those. And then at the end, I have a surprise for one of our subscribers. So let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about what I use to actually put my dolls away. I use metal tins and they look like this. Um, you can get these off Amazon. Uh, you get them off eBay. You can get them pretty much any <laughs> online store. Um, these are just tiny little metal tins and inside I put silica packets. So there's one, I use whatever I've got around the house to be honest. So you'll see when I open them, different ones. But um, these are silica packets. To show you a bag, this is a bag of silica packets I got off Amazon. Um, you can get all sorts of different sizes and varieties, but Effectively, silica packets are a desiccant, so they remove moisture. So anytime there's any moisture in a set, which could be possible, and especially with fluctuations in the temperature and the weather and the humidity, um, we don't want that to damage our sets. So I have put silica packets in all of my tins for that reason. Um, something I've always done with my Christmas ornaments and just to make sure that things that I might put away and not look at for a little bit, that they stay in perfect condition. The other reason that I've gone with tins is when I receive a lot of my poly sets, especially ones that I get off eBay, polys are often stored in a plastic bag. I'll give you an example here. So. Here's a set of non-poly figures um, that we have in a plastic bag. Um, the only reason I don't like using plastic bags is because they do trap moisture and in extreme heat or cold, things can sweat a bit and I don't want it to damage my polys. So I have opted to use the silica packet and the tin. The other reason I like the tin is because if you collect polys, you know how easy it is for their arms to break. They have such delicate little arms. Um, and by putting them in a tin, I know that for a fact, their arms are not going to be broken if they get bumped around. So that's why I decided to go with metal tins. Now that may or may not work for you. Um, and depending on where you live, you may have a solution that works better for your climate. I live in Canada, pretty close to the U S border and we have very moderate weather where I live. And so this solution works well for me. Um, if you do something else, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to always hear how everyone else stores their collections, but this is what I use, metal tins and silica packets. I will link in the comments, or not in the comments, in the description to these packets that I bought, but effectively anything will work. Um, you can save them from shoe boxes, things you get in the mail. You probably have a bunch of silica packets laying around your house in shoe boxes right now. So um, go find those. Those are really the best thing to use. Okay, so those are the tins that I use. Let's now talk about my organization system. So we'll put this aside for a moment. I have so many sets right now and so many more on the way that I quickly became overwhelmed with how to store things. And my solution was to use one of these bins from Ikea. Um, these are Kugis bins. I'll link to it in the description, but um, 
they fit these tins really well. Now you'll see that I've put cardboard, I've just cut cardboard down as dividers, but I have it all sorted. Everything is sorted by year and then the set's name alphabetically after that. So if I go to look for a set, I can find it immediately and everything is in alphabetical order and all nicely sorted. So these are most of the dolls I have <laughs> that are already cataloged. As you can see, I have some sets that are not cataloged yet. It takes a long time to go through everything, but this is what's currently cataloged. Um, I don't intend to keep all of my sets. Um, I really would like to just keep the best of my duplicates. So if I do end up with two or three, my plan is to trade or sell them off um, so that I can get different sets and um, build a larger collection. So these, uh, some of them you will see duplicates and I've written on some of them, keep or not keep based on that. I'm trying to think of one <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, probably the townhouse. Yeah, I have a few of the townhouse, so I'll pull that out and show you. Okay, so for example, this is uh, Polly's townhouse 1989. I have two of those at the moment. Um, I have one that is complete. So I've marked it complete yes, keep yes, how many figures are in the set and how many I have. So three out of three. On the label, I'll put every single uh, figure that is in the set and then a check mark next to the ones I have. So you'll see a very similar label on my one that's incomplete. Um, it says complete no, keep no, because it's my duplicate. So I will eventually either trade or sell this off. Um, and at the moment I have one of three figures, which happens to be Polly. So I put a check mark next to her and then I am missing the dog and cat right now for this duplicate. So I may get those in other lots and then I would update my label. But at the moment I can see very clearly which are the ones that go with the set that I'm willing to keep and which one goes with the duplicate. So that's how I manage when I have more than one and which one is my good set and which one is my secondary set. Okay, so we'll put those off to the side for now. So let's do this from scratch. We're gonna start out with this toy shop from 1993. It's the Christmas edition of the toy shop. Um, I never had this one as a kid and I'm really excited to have it now. It's effectively the same as the Polyville Toy Shop, except it is all painted for Christmas. It's so cute. Red roof, red sidewalk. There are little sort of snow details. It looks like it's just been dusted with snow and um, all sorts of other Christmas details. Obviously it's painted all red, green, and white for Christmas. There's a little candy cane in here, Christmas lights on the side and inside it's meant to look like Santa's workshop. So sorry that the lighting's not ideal right now, but everything is done up for Christmas in this set. Now this set's not complete. So this is the first one we're gonna catalog is an incomplete set. So I've got three characters with this. And when I catalog these sets, I will typically use a few resources that I'll show you in a moment, but these are the three dolls that I currently have. So there are, I believe, six figures with this set. One more human, a reindeer, and a sled that comes with the reindeer. So I am missing three. Um, if you happen to have them and you wanna trade for something, let me know, hit me up. Um, but these are the three that I currently have. So here's how I go about this. Um, first, I like to use a website called onlypollypocket.com. It is hands down the best resource that I have found. Shout out to onlypollypocket.com. I am so glad that this resource exists because I don't know what I'd do without it, to be honest. So what I'll do is first I'm going to pull this up on my computer. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I am on onlypollypocket.com. Now, if I look at the bottom of my set, I can see that it is from 1993. So the way that this website works is they have pretty much most of the poly stuff that exists um, to the best of their knowledge. They have it all sorted. And down the left side of the website, it is categorized by year. 
So you first have to figure out what year you're looking for. So I'm looking at 1993. So I'm going to click on that. And then from here, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You're just trying to match up what set you have with what you're seeing on the website. So I can see here it says holiday toy shop. I'm going to click on that. And then when I scroll down, I can verify, oh yeah, that's the one I've got. And they have put here the names of all the figures and then any additional pieces. So you can see here that this set comes with six pieces of which I currently have three. So I have Polly. I have, per the description on the website here, I also have Daria and I have Mrs. Claus. And if you're familiar with the fun time clock or you watched my fun time clock video that I did a few weeks ago, um, you might recognize Mrs. Claus because she's also Mrs. Chime. <laughs> so there's a few kind of repeats that have just been painted um, more Christmassy, but the Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus in this set are the same as the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chime that we see in the fun time clock. So I've got those three. So what I'll do at this point is I will then open up another application on my computer. You can see here I have a label printer. This is just a Dymo label writer. Um, I had this, I didn't buy this just for Polly's, just to be clear. I'm just a super nerd and I love having gadget stuff. So for me, having a label printer was just something that made me happy. So I have a label printer. Um, but I decided to make this a little bit easier on myself. I would come up with a template to categorize all of my poly sets and use the label printer so it's all neat and tidy. So let's open that up. Okay, so here we are. This is the Dymo program that I use to design the labels that I print out. I've just kept it really simple, nothing fancy or extra cute or anything. Um, this is just for me to sort. So I know that this is now called the 1993 Holiday Toy Shop. So I'm just gonna fill that in. And then at this point, I know it's not complete. I am going to keep it because it's my first of this set and hopefully I will be able to acquire the other three pieces. So at the moment I have three out of the six pieces. I have Polly. I have, oh, what was her name? Let's look, what was her name? Daria, Mrs. Claus and Santa. Okay, we're gonna keep note of that, <laughs> Daria. Mrs. Claus, Santa, and the reindeer, and the sleigh. So I have these three. So I list all the characters off just so that I'm aware what I'm missing at a glance. So now that I've got this in my program, I'm just gonna come on down to the side and hit print. There it is. Okay, so then I'm gonna peel this off. And now I've got a tin ready. So what I'll do is I will just close the tin. I come at it from the side and I just gently push the label on there, fold it over. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. And then once I've got the label on, I will go ahead, open it up, put my figures in. And now my figures are safely stored inside. That will go into my bin here, which I'll have to rearrange, <laughs> but we'll keep that off to the side. And then I just make sure that I get those in alphabetical order. Then as for the actual playset itself, this will go onto my shelf. So we're gonna put that on my shelf later. So we will close this up, put it off to the side. That's one set done. Okay, on to our next one. Okay, so now I'm back on onlypollypocket.com. My next set that we've got right here is from 1997. Now I know that already, but just to show you, if I flip this over again, I'm just looking for that information on the bottom. 
how I know what I'm looking for. So it says Bluebird 1997, flip that over. And I'm going to go on the website to 1997. I am scrolling down until I see my set. There it is, pool party. And then from here, there's two variations. There's one that was made for Mattel and one that's made for Bluebird. Now they just have different colors for the figures. The figures have slightly different bathing suits um, between the two sets. I know that mine is the Mattel one, so I'm going to click on Mattel. And then just scrolling down, I can verify, yes, those are indeed the two figures that came with this particular set. And I can see that there is, of course, Polly, and then there is Lauren, and that's all that's in the set. Something that's interesting about the set I have is you'll notice that if you look at the photo on onlypollypocket.com, um, there is a photo of a different banner and a different lounge chair. There is a variation of this set um, that has the orange <laughs> chair and Again, this banner, which was the same as the one we saw before, if I go back to it, same banner. Mine has a different banner. And just from doing some, a little bit of research on eBay, looking at different listings, sold listings for this, looks like there was two banners. Um, so some slight variations between the sets. Uh, there are a few sets that there's some weird variations of things, but I guess that's just what's happening here. So here's my set, it is complete, which is exciting. So again, we're just gonna grab a tin and I've already got my silica packet in there. I'm gonna open up my Dymo labeler and we're going to modify this. So this one was called, what was it called again? Pool party. Okay, so 1997, pool party, keep yes, complete yes. Yay. <laughs> and we're gonna do two out of two. Polly and I believe her name was Lauren. And I'm going to print that. I'll pop my figures in. And we're going to put the label on. Now we missed a step when we did the toy one, which was showing you how I keep track of the ones I have and the ones I'm missing in a set. So the way I like to do that is I just have a Sharpie marker and I will put a check mark next to the ones that I know are inside. So because this one's complete, those both get a check mark. For this one, I had Polly, Daria, and Mrs. Claus, so they get a check mark, and then the other ones do not. So if I look at this from a glance, I know that I'm missing those three. So really easy to keep track by doing it that way. Okay, so that's what I do when I have a set. Now, <laughs> sometimes, uh, all the time, I get Polly's that are stranded. They do not have a home, and then what do I do with those? Um, well. For the moment, I've just been keeping track of them in a spreadsheet and I have a bin full of spare polys, um, which is kind of, it's a little out of control right now, but um, this bag contains uh, polys that are broken and or not polys. Um, so just random things I've gotten lots. I believe a lot of these are actually from the Galoob dream house things. I haven't looked into that very much, but very similar to Polly Pocket. Uh, but these are things that are either broken or not Polly. Um, this bag is Polly's that are in very rough shape. Uh, these are ones that are just like completely missing their faces or their paint is really, really bad. So those are ones that I'm putting aside for a project to restore them or maybe repaint them and do something special with them. We'll see, but I've put them aside so they don't get mixed in. As you can see, I also keep a big silica packet in here and then all of my, <laughs> there's about a hundred in here right now. And then we're gonna put two more in there in a moment, but that's where I keep my spare polys. So let's talk about how I catalog these. 
So these ones, I use a spreadsheet. So I'm gonna pull up my spreadsheet on the computer for you. All right, so this is my poly spreadsheet. Um, I have, it's a very simple spreadsheet. I have three tabs of what sets I currently have. Um, the ones that are sort of a mint color, those are ones that are complete. The ones that are silver are missing pieces or maybe have like little broken pieces. And then um, I have it sorted so that I have the name, year, the complete status, any pieces that are missing, if there's any extra notes that I wanted to put there in there for myself, and then what type of set it is, if it's part of a particular line or series or anything else that I want to be able to sort by. And the second tab is <laughs> what, what I currently do not have yet in my possession um, that I did have as a child. These are the sets that I'm currently hoping to pick up. Um, and have not yet acquired. So those are the ones I'm missing from my original collection back when I was a kid. And then my third one is a spreadsheet of the Polly dolls that I have in my bin. So everything that's in my bin, um, I have it sorted so that I've got their name, what set they were, and then I have it sorted by type. The types that I use are just animal, um, child, uh, then the main characters like Lulu, Midge, Tina, and then I have males because <laughs> there's not very many of them, and then other. Um, and obviously there is a category for Polly. So um, that's how I have it sorted. And I'll basically go in here and I will add a line. Now I'm just using numbers on my Mac. Um, I, you could also use Excel. I, the only reason I'm using numbers over Excel right now is because it's just a little more friendly when it comes to dragging photos in. Um, so I've got two characters here. I have, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're gonna look it up. <laughs> That's the whole point of this video. So uh, the way that you figure that out is you have to look at the bottom. So they will all be stamped and it's so small. I don't think this is gonna pick up on camera, but they're all stamped. They have a uh, zoom, focus, focus, there we go. They all have a date. And so I'm just take, basically taking this date that's on the bottom and I'm looking this up on the Only Polly Pocket website. So back to the website. Uh, again, this website's amazing. So at the top, they have a doll identification button. I click on that. This particular doll, this one that we're gonna look at first is this one that has a crown. Um, and she is stamped with the date 1993. So again, they have this sorted by year. So as long as you know the year, you scroll down, you click 1993 dolls. I know this is a poly, and so the site tends to be sorted so that it's polys first and then the other characters afterwards. So if I go to the poly section, I'm basically just scrolling through and looking until I find this particular one that has a crown. And hopefully I haven't missed her. There she is. So she's from the Pony Parade Ring 1993. Um, so I've, I see her there. So what I do is I just basically pop this photo into my spreadsheet. And then I take the name from it. So the pony parade ring and the year. So and she's a poly. And that is how I do that. So we'll do one more. So this one's stamped with 1996. So we'll scroll down to 96. And, oh, wrong place. Doll identification, 1996 dolls. Now, to me, this uh, looks like it's just sorted simply by Polly and then other. So there's not a lot to look at, but I can see here, this is Rose. She's from the Butterflyer 1996. And that is all we need to know about that. So she is an other, her name's Rose. 
did I spell that correct? I guess so. And then I will just click in here and I will usually just drag a photo over. In this case, I'm going to pop a screenshot in just to have just her. And that's how I catalog my spares. Okay, so at that point, once we've got them cataloged, these are going to go into the bin where they will live. But now that I've got that, if I come across one of those sets and I don't have the figure for it, I will now know from my spreadsheet to look in my bin. So that's how I keep track because <laughs> there's so many figures, there's so many sets, it's hard. And if you don't have a system, it can fall apart really quickly. So I hope that that was helpful in terms of how I do that personally. If you do things differently, I'd love to hear how you do it, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. If you've tried something in the past and then decided to do something else, tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear how you sort your toy collection. Okay, here we are in my poly space. And again, sorry, <laughs> that is removed for another video that we are filming, but um, lighting's not ideal in here. I apologize for that. But here is our spot to put our two sets that we just cataloged. So we're gonna go ahead and get them in there. And there we are. Our sets are safe and sound back in the poly cabinet. And we'll visit them again another day. I hope you enjoyed checking out how I catalog my sets. So I received a comment on one of my videos a few weeks ago, um, my 1989 Polly's Cafe playset and the variant that I showed together in one video. There was a comment from a subscriber named Corey who said, I hope you'll come across the one I had as a child because I miss it and I've never seen one since. I love this channel. I said back to her, can you describe it? I probably have it. And she replied, it had a fuzzy panda and a little bamboo area for it. I think it was called Pretty Panda or Pet Panda, a blue heart compact. Well, guess what, Corey? <laughs> I've got it. So I've decided to pull it out just to show Corey, here is the compact from your childhood. So this is it. And let me pull out the actual figures for it. May as well, since we're here, you probably want to see that too. This is the 1993 Pretty Panda set from the Pet Parade collection. And fortunately, my set is indeed Complete. So we will open it up and check it out. Comes with a large panda and a baby panda. They're both fuzzy, so they're flocked figures. And a Polly that's holding bamboo. There they are, so sweet. And there again is the inside of the set. So the pandas can live in their little bamboo pen. I'm sure that I can probably click these in a little better for you so you can see what they look like. So it looks like there's just a spot for one. <laughs> Maybe one goes here. And then Polly has bamboo that she can feed them. This door opens and closes. There is a little area that they can hide. And then of course, as with most sets, Polly has a little apartment that she can hang out in. So uh, sort of Japanese style tea room, it looks like with little mats on the floor, a low table and a tea set. And then there is a bed with some bamboo shades behind. So cute. So Corey, I hope that made your day. I know how it feels not having poly sets that you had as a kid and which is why I'm doing this and um, I hope that this just brings a little joy to your day to see this piece of your childhood again so that's for you Corey if you have a set that you think I might have that you really want to see just let me know I'm happy to show them to you I'm gonna work through all of them eventually I'm sure but if there's something you're just dying to see and I've got it, I'd be happy to show it to you. So always feel free to reach out and leave a comment and let me know. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed looking at that process with me in terms of how I store things, how I sort them. And I hope that that was eye-opening and I'd love to hear if there are things that you would do differently, if you have a toy collection, if you do things differently, what works for you, what doesn't. Um, let me know in the comments. If you are not following us on Instagram yet, please come follow along at Pocket Vintage Toys where I share all sorts of behind the scenes stuff, including my poly hauls as they show up, lots of interactive quizzes and behind the scenes footage. So please come follow along on Instagram. And if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, I will be bringing you new poly content every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.